Welcome friends, today I want to share some tip for beginners with you and I strongly believe it will make your start in disciples liberation much much easier. So if my tips help you don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to get more videos about disciples. And let's start. First of all, when I first time start playing disciples and I get in battle, I was really confused how the healing works, enemies was healing and I wasn't. And everything turned out to be very simple. You heal every turn you end your turn and you have unspended action points. Just end the turn and he's healed. Of course, there will be a special characters with healing spell, and your main hero will have a healing spell, the first spell you learn. Now you will figure it out. Let's go on. During your journey you will find a lot of locked places, like this tomb for example. Or maybe... Your path is blocked with these poison swines. Or you find some kind of portal, a gateway. And you will need a companion to unlock these places. For example, right now I have a very interesting necromancer and he have a ability to open a gateway, yes, he can activate the portals. But to get this ability you will have to complete your companion quest and only after this you will be able to get rid of these vines, enter the dungeon or activate the portal. And one more thing, to do this you don't have to have him in your party. He can just stay in the castle and ability will be still working. During your adventure you will find a lot of spells, but wait a minute, I can't use them in battle. But why? I tell you why. You must go back to town first. And in town go to castle and you see, you have to research the spell first. It's not hard thing to do. We have a few different schools and for example, let's research summon lesser devil. And that's it, now I can use this spell. And right here will be another very useful option, it called reassign skills, yes. At the beginning of the game we can mess up with these skill trees. And we can easily reassign them, it will cost us a little money, but that's not a problem at all. So don't afraid to experiment with your skill allocations, you can always reassign them here. And all of this lead us to classes, yes there will be classes in your game. Right now from the beginning your main hero Aviana is mercenary. But she will be able to choose a class after you complete a prologue and two more maps. I strongly recommend you to choose a class and plan your hero from the very beginning. In general, Warlord is a pure warrior class. Ceres is a pure mage class, Hexblade is a mix of warrior and fighter, and which is very special class, it specializes on the buffs. This class will make your enemies very weak and die very slowly. And friends, write me in comment section which class do you choose, I really want to know. Sometimes you can pay less attention to your backline, I did it, and I regret this already cause backline is very powerful. Abilities they give you is just irreplaceable, for example Shadowcaster can grant you unholy protection and dodge, yes dodge is very important, but what I like most is this zombie fellow cause he can poison your opponents, yes, do them direct damage right from the backline. So always, always keep someone in backline. I strongly believe you already know that there are four faction in disciples and when you improve relationship it gives you certain kind of bonuses like morale boost and you can recruit more powerful warriors units to your army, that's most important bonus. 
But I strongly advise you to choose only two factions and improve your relationship with them, cause Empire don't like legions and elves don't like undead, and it's very hard to improve relationship with elves and with undead at the same time. So right from the beginning choose your factions, and you can always choose another factions in another walkthrough. And I believe you already know that you can face out a building and you always, always can bring it back and the building will remain at the same level, so building is not completely destroyed. If it was upgraded to tire true, it will be tire true if you bring it back and actually it doesn't cost a lot, only 500 gold pieces, so don't afraid of experiment. I believe you already found some emotional shard, but I believe you don't know that you can upgrade them, <laughs> yes. You can migrate two shards, the same shards of the same level and upgrade them to more rare ones. And also you can upgrade your companion's equipment, oh, that's changed the game completely. Let's try it and let's upgrade this assassin twin's dagger. And remember, when you recruit a unit like this beautiful zombie, he's always level 1, so you have to train him to your level. Oh, let's do it. And keep doing it until you will be a maximum level, it's very important. And few tips about combat, always use these places of power, it can change the battle completely, especially when you are outnumbered like I am right now. But that's not all, to do me. more damage, try to backstab your Feel opponents. One of your heroes must be in front of enemy and other from the back and you see flanking. When you flanking your opponents you will do a lot of more damage and you will have a higher critical strike chance. And as I told you before, don't forget to keep someone in backline cause he will do damage also. You see he poisons this zombie, it's very useful. So friends, I believe my little tips will help you to start a successful journey into the world of disciples liberation and if they do, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel, especially if you love disciples and it's a great game, a little bit dark and depressive, but still a great game, I will be happy to see you on my channel again. So. Thanks for watching and till the next time friends, see you!